Hi, everybody. How's it going? You guys good? All right. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. OK, so this is my team's mission uh, to connect audiences and storytellers in the creation of transformative experiences. It's the North Star of what we do as a newly founded group, uh, the media product group, which uh, I'm responsible for at Facebook ARVR. Basically, our job is to elevate storytellers of all varieties and help them help you drive towards the shared goal of a self-sustaining ecosystem in VR. My, my name is Colm Slavin, and for those of you who know me, uh, I like to talk about storytelling. And for those of you who are keeping count, this is my fourth year here at Oculus Connect talking about that very topic. And this year, I have a slightly more pragmatic message than in prior years, or, or slightly more practical framework to talk about. So um, why less poetry? Well, there, I do have a little bit of poetry at the end, but mainly the thing I wanted to talk about was I'm and my team, I and my team are, are really excited about the future for storytellers, more excited than we've ever been. And part of the reason for that is we're in the process of rolling out some tools and some workflows and some, some processes and just some services basically for storytellers and creators that I think humbly are potential game changers for people working in this field. So basically I wanna talk about three things today. I wanna to talk about our goal, the success of a two-sided market for creators and their audiences. I wanna talk about 10 elements, 10 components that we think pave the roadmap towards that goal, the things we need uh, in order to build towards that goal. And then I also wanna talk about a secret 11th ingredient at the very end, the secret sauce. Okay, so does that sound good? Let's, let's get into it. Uh, this is also uh, an image I've, I've talked about in the past. It's uh, a Roman coin from uh, around 60 BC bearing the image of the god Janus. And he was the god of beginnings, transitions, the god of time, duality, and doorways. And one of his faces looks towards the future, and his other face looks to the past. And the legendary film editor and filmmaker, Walter Murch, who I have a bordering on uh, total obsession with at the moment, refers to him in a talk he gives, which, which you can look up online. Um, and in that talk, he talks about the fact that when you're using technology in the pursuit of the craft of storytelling, you're constantly crashing through barriers and passing through doorways. And for me over the past year, certainly since OC5 when I first stumbled on this, this symbol has been sort of pinging around in my head a lot to remind me that while we're in this liminal space of the importance of balance, that while we're forging a path to the future, which you all are doing, it's important to keep the past in its appropriate perspective as well. So we're, uh, we're focused, my team and I are all focused on the growth and evolution of VR and AR as a storytelling medium, on the establishment of media as a first-class citizen in the ecosystem, and as I said, on the creation of a viable two-sided market for creators and consumers of media alike. So our work is all about balance, as I said, a balance between the past and the future, a balance between storytelling and agency, which as you guys know is a common theme in a lot of the presentations and talks and conversations you get into here at OC6, and specifically germane to the conversation today, a balance between creators and consumers. So this notion of building a two-sided market requires us to strike a particularly delicate balance as creators and their audiences, we believe, are sort of fundamentally in this state of symbiosis when things are working as they should. So the shared destination that we keep talking about is ubiquitous adoption of the medium, right? That this is everywhere and this is how people consume entertainment and stories and experiences. And experiences specifically, games, media, stories, applications, are central to this strategy. And with the formation of the media product group, we're making media narrative 
central and first class citizens. So whether you're a civilian with a smartphone or a 360 camera, or you're a professional creator and producer, we place you as a storyteller at the center of our universe. However, the, the challenge that we're collectively facing is that media and storytelling as an experiential ecosystem is immature. And it's in a fundamentally more nascent state than its gaming counterpart. I think that's inarguable. So what we've done is we've worked really hard to break down a roadmap for success into a set of key elements that have to be robust, they have to exist, they have to be robust, and they have to be in balance. So what are those elements? Okay, so this visual of a staircase is how I like to think about the basic components that we think are necessary for the growth and flourishing of this media and storytelling ecosystem. And what I wanna do is I wanna talk about the overarching philosophy we have on this notion of a two-sided market, and also to give you guys our take on the state of play of each of these elements. Because the fact is that these components are not all created equal. They don't all necessarily matter to the same degree as, as each other. And also, they're not all in a common state of maturity or health, right? They're, in some cases, we're at a very solid maturity level, whereas in, others place, in other places, things are either entirely non-existent or, or they're emerging. So that informs the level of effort we have to invest in each of these uh, areas, as well as the time it might take to build a particular muscle. But this basically represents a sort of a mnemonic for us on the media team that we look at, and if we're not tackling one of these problems, we ask ourselves, why are we doing it? Our mission and goal is to create an ecosystem where creators are making things and making money, and audiences are consuming things and happily reciprocating by paying said money. So slightly less flippantly, we want to create a world where storytellers can be profitable with immersive media in a self-sustaining cycle, and audiences can enjoy a diet of fresh, delightful narrative experiences on a steady cadence, basically to reduce the friction that developers and creators experience in, in creation and in production, and to increase the value for uh, the audience, the value and delight for the audience. So getting here requires a lot of focus, a lot of investment, and let me break it down. So one side of the staircase is speaks to creators. So let's start with them. These five ingredients are, are what I wanna talk about. So to begin with, our most basic expectation for creators, put simply, is do creators understand how, why, and where to create for the platform, and are they aware of the fundamental value reach and the possible return as a creator? Do they have access to the necessary resources and tools to make their job possible or easy? And do they know who to talk to? So what kind of shape are we in? Well, we are a growing organization and have gotten actually pretty large in the last several years. So we've inadvertently become somewhat multifaceted, fairly porous, with a lot of points of entry and access. And it's not intrinsically bad, but it can lead to churn and redundancy for creators and producers. And it's pretty common for us to fill multiple out field, multiple outreaches from an individual creator to numerous people or several people within our teams in ARVR. And that often happens because people just don't know where to begin, so they try a bunch of different doors. So the formation of the media product group, we think, is a big step in mitigating this to the extent that it is a problem for developers. As media creators now have a single doorway and a single point of entry, and we're also working to build out a, tool, a toolkit, um, you know, a robust creator community portal to reduce the amount of duplication and redundancy that creators experience in this regard. So the types of tools that we use to make experiences, to produce and, and launch experiences, exist, I guess, on, on two ends of, of a spectrum or two ends of a pipeline. At one end, you have creation tools. And at the opposite end, you have publication and distribution tools, which are both in, entirely essential for, for creators. On the front end of the pipeline, when it comes to creation, creators have to have ready access to robust tools best practices, documentation, and workflows. Bless you. Uh, that is the dream. 
the truth is another story, as, as many of you know. It's a tough area. Creation tools and workflows and best practices are wildly inconsistent and in varying states of maturity uh, from, you know, across the industry and from one format to the next. If you're working in a real-time engine, whether you're a game developer or a creator or developer that just works in real time, you're more likely to be working with a mature suite of industry standard tools and processes, whereas on the video side, it's much more of a frontier. Shooting, stitching, editing, color grading, uh, you name it, uh, all of these represent a massive array of choices and complexities for, for creators once they get in. And uh, it can be, it can be, it can, it can mire people in decision making, but it can also lead them down a bad path that is very hard to come back from. So how do we help? One of the things we're doing is essentially we have an internal test kitchen, if you like within our media organization, within our team, that's comprised of prototypers, but also really talented creators, um, filmmakers, producers, and people who have deep experience in the creation of experiences. And what they do is they prototype and design hypothetical experiences, document and share best practices and workflows they've tested, and ultimately, and I'll share some of these a little, in a little bit with you, develop role model experiences in partnership with creators to sort of validate the hypotheses we might have about a specific format or, or a specific experience to demonstrate the best approaches available. So at the other end of the pipeline, when it comes time to launch, when it comes to uploading and distributing your experience, a mature and stable ecosystem has user-friendly and dependable tools for ingest, upload, marketing, distribution, trailers, everything, you name it, for AR, VR, media experiences. It hasn't been the reality for creators. The truth is, it's been a painful process. The process for launch and distribution of uh, narrative and media experiences has been brittle, slow, and fragile. The good news is, we've been absorbing this feedback uh, over a, a decent amount of time, and we've heard it from creators loud and clear, and we think we have a fix. Uh, and it's something that the team talked a little bit about in the keynote, but our team has built an application we call Media Studio. So Media Studio is a very fully featured online VR-first media asset management and publishing system. It enables creators to manage, share, and analyze their content. And it's a massive title shift for creators who've been accustomed to dealing with media in the past. You know, it allows you to create discoverable instances of your experiences on 2D surfaces and then view them in VR. It allows creators to build profiles to curate their experiences for dist distribution. So this is one that uh, we've announced that we're launching and is coming out and will be available to everyone. But I'm particularly excited about this this tool and this product because it addresses a very specific logjam and a very specific friction point for creators. And if it, if it performs in the way we intend for it to perform, it will open the floodgates for creators to show up on the platform in a way they've been unable to do in the past because it's just been such a sticky process. So knowledge is power and the availability of data and the ability of creators to respond to data is a tremendously powerful tool. And as part of the Media Studio suite, uh, we will provide, we'll now be able to provide a set of reliable headset consumption metrics to media creators, average watch times, views, et cetera, et cetera. But basically, orders of magnitude more data than media narrative creators have ever had access to in the past. When it comes to uh, this last point, so creators need line of sight to a monetary return on their investment in VR. This is our long-term goal, our ultimate goal. It's the top stair on the creator side of the staircase. And it's still early days, as you all know. Uh, one of the things that we are discovering uh, pretty readily when it comes to 
uh, all of the data we see from our existing headsets and our existing users is the power of traditional media. So our content strategy going forward is to bring audiences onto the platform with the familiar, an offering of brands and media that they know and love and are gravitate to uh, because they're high quality and they're, and they're recognizable brands, but then to surprise them with the unexpected, to surprise them with innovative, immersive experiences that sort of present this VR-specific value proposition. So we think that the goal of revenue for media creators will become attainable as the programming of media begins to approach the level of volume, sophistication, and quality, quality that users expect. However, it also depends on us creating breathing room for innovative creators to build experiences like Wolves in the Walls or like Vader Immortal or like Half and Half that shift the perception of what is possible in a narrative or a story experience. The fact is, we have to build to scale and reach a, a state of critical mass. And when audiences are gaining inarguable value from the experience of VR and the ways I'm talking about, then monetization will, will be the byproduct. Okay, so those are the five key target areas that we're firing at from the media team's perspective and the ones that apply to creators. So let me talk about what we think the audiences need. Audience awareness of the platform is an equally vital component to creator access to the platform. Are current and future users even aware of what the platform has to offer? Uh, this is basically a core challenge for the entire ecosystem. The media narrative question is, is really just a microcosm of the need for overall awareness of VR as a desirable part of a media diet. The good news is that we think that stories have a primal appeal and a universal familiarity that draw users to the platform. What does Tyrion Lannister say? Everybody loves a good story. Um, we also think that the quest is an inflection point in this regard and an indication that the growing awareness of VR as a platform for more than just early adopters or more than only hardcore gamers is building. So back to the theme of the familiar and the unexpected, users have to be able to readily find what they expect. They also need the opportunity, they need to be given the opportunity to come across things that might surprise them. But historically, our discovery systems, quite honestly, have been highly fragmented, inconsistent from a quality perspective, and lacking adequate curation, which is something we aim to fix with a brand new launch of an existing product, Oculus TV. So this sweeping update to Oculus TV provides exactly that, a new discovery surface at the top level of the user experience, allowing a one-stop shop for storytelling and media. And it'll also allow us to, I talked about curation, it allows us to program the right media to the right user at the right time and makes that media readily accessible for quick access at a later time. So to me, these two bookends of the pipeline, Media Studio and Oculus TV in its new form, it's hard for me to overstate the importance of, of both of these products, both the, the importance of gathering all of these experiences into a single location and the combination of Media Studio at the top of the funnel for, for, uh, for creators bringing experiences to the platform and then Oculus TV on the distribution side. I think it really changes the equation for creators and it's exciting for me to think about what the rest of 2019 and the beginning, uh, beginning and into 2020 is going to look like as users discover uh, this new location and this new possibility for them. I think, it's, I think it's going to change everything about how people perceive VR. So experiences obviously couldn't be more critical to our audience. Uh, our goal is to satisfy that need. Our goal is to deliver a steady cadence of diverse, high-quality experiences across the spectrum of formats. And to begin with, as I mentioned earlier, naturally we want all of this top-notch, great 2D media that audiences expect to be front and center. When audiences enter VR and they're greeted with the brands of media that they know and love, 
that is a that is a good feeling, and that is something that will bring people into the platform who may be who may not be early adopters, who may not be comfortable with the level of friction that some of us are. And then, in addition, our goal is to surprise them with the unexpected, with innovative, immersive experiences. For instance, the immersive painterly experiences that are possible in Quill. So we, we love Quill and we love the Quill community. Uh, this example is Four Stories by Nick Ladd. And it's another example of one of these VR only possible experiences. It's a magical immersive narrative where you have to essentially sort of circumnavigate the building uh, in which the story is playing out to really understand all sides of the story that is happening. Or the really beautiful illustrated impressionism of Remedy by Daniel Pajczyk is just gorgeous. The diversity of the styles possible through this tool never ceased to amaze me. Or visit Adam Savage and his crew of artists and makers in their intimate workspaces and workshops in this new application we just launched re recently uh, alongside with a tested team called Tested VR. And you can get up close and personal with him and his team in a way only VR will allow. This is a good example of one of the things I mentioned earlier where our team, where Eric Chang on our team worked directly with the tested team uh, to figure out what's the best possible experience in a 180 VR uh, scenario. And we thought about intimacy, we thought about access, we thought about resolution and detail. And that was the result in tested VR and, the, and uh, what we're seeing so far is, is, uh, is really striking. Ascend to the roof of the world in vivid resolution with Jonathan Griffith, who's sitting over there. Hi, Jonathan. Um, it, Alpine Adventures, Everest VR, not for the faint of heart and not for me <laughs> because it terrifies me. Um, or experience the powerful Emmy-nominated documentary from Roger Ross Williams, Aisha Nataraja, and Felix and Paul Studios, Traveling While Black. And if you'll allow me, I'm just going to play this trailer. The Green Book was a guide for African Americans to travel safely to find shelter, food, and gas in a time when these basic rights were not guaranteed. Every trip through America for a black person during those times was potentially fatal. The assumption is at some time it stopped, and that's not the case. It never stopped. I am feared, really frightened, for black men traveling while black. I wonder. When does it end? If you haven't seen Traveling While Black, please do. Um, I, I find this to be, we worked on this project for many years. Elena on our team drove it, along with the New York Times Opdocs team and Felix and Paul and Roger. Uh, but no matter how many times I see this experience, I never fail to be moved by it. Uh, it, I think, fulfills one of the fundamental promises of VR, that it transports you somewhere that, to a time and place that you couldn't otherwise visit. And then it engages you in a conversation that you may otherwise never be privy to. And in doing that, it shifts your worldview, basically through the power of human empathy that's only possible in VR. And you, you all should see it. It is truly remarkable. So basically, the experiences that, like these examples, that I've just sort of touched on are, you know, they're the reason we're here, and they're the reason we do what we do. Creators and the art they make are the beating heart of this medium. There are so many amazing magical experiences out there, and again, I'm excited to have them all in one location, and I think it changes the game for the ecosystem and for creators. Okay, so once people are in the headset, to a large extent, it's all about programming. Uh, once people have made the commitment to visit our world, it's incumbent on us to give them a reason to stay and a reason to return. So stories and media, I think, are the best reason for people to return habitually to a platform. And one of the things we're working on is a very extensive programming calendar to fulfill that expectation. In addition to 
helping people build a habit where they want to put this thing on their face every day and consume stories and, and experiences. They also have to be able to easily share that content with others, both in and out of the headset. It's a, that is a, a, a base level expectation as well. Okay, so the last item on the, so this side of the equation, uh, on the consumer side of the, of the staircase, is in, you know, will people spend? The flip side of monetization goal for creators, the top stair of our consumer staircase. So the frank reality is we've done a pretty good job um, collectively as a, as a, as a people uh, of training users that media should be free. However, I honestly believe that if we invest in the ways I've been talking about, invest in quality, invest in programming, invest in diversity of content, we expect people uh, to see value and to be willing to invest their time. The bottom line is that Audiences will pay for value, for true value, and that's our job. It's incumbent on us as a platform and on us as creators to provide that value across the whole spectrum of offerings that we have. Okay, so those are my 10 things. And, you know, as I said, this is the framework we're using to basically interrogate our priorities and to basically think about what are we tackling does it solve one of these problems? If not, why not? And uh, it's a fairly simple plan. I've, 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 made this as, uh, I've made this sort of elementary, mainly for my own consumption. And we think it paves the way towards the possibility of a self-sustaining ecosystem. Because we fully believe in this notion of a symbiotic relationship between audiences and storytellers. On a related topic, I, I want to highly encourage you to check out another couple of talks today, uh, my brilliant and talented colleagues. Uh, first of all, with immediately after this session, Eric, Asad, and Abesh will be talking in a lot more detail about the whole life cycle of ideation, creation, design, upload, and distribution, everything from soup to nuts. Uh, in deeper detail, obviously, than, than I've talked about today. And I highly recommend that because it sort of shows you, you'll see the three key people on our team who are charged with, with building that pipeline and what they're trying to do for creators. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you'll see the two coolest college professors I've ever seen, Yelena and Clint, talking about the impact of immersive design on emotion. And, and that, at the end of the day, that potential is why we're all doing what we're doing and what it's really all about. So please check them out. Eric Asad Abesh right after me, Clinton Yelena a little bit later at 4.30 today. Okay, so uh, I talked a fair amount about the how. I love this word, however. I, I wanna leave you with a complimentary thought and um, the why. So in the interest of balance, I want to also talk about the why we do what we do. So I've basically spent the last 25, 30 minutes talking to you about the empirical. And, and that's, to a large extent, our day in, day out. We get really focused on what are the features necessary in a product in order to achieve a result? What are the value propositions necessary for a user in order for them to retain or engage on the platform. The empirical is what fuels everything for us. And these 10 elements I've talked about are a set of empirical components that we think represent a potential formula for shared success. But I omitted a key and, and, and more ephemeral element. And I also think that there's this error we perpetrate incessantly in our community and certainly in our, in, in, in our industry. And that error is to bifurcate or separate the empirical from the creative. And I think that's a mistake. I actually think that the empirical and the creative are inseparable codependent companions. Because without creators, without storytellers, the entire endeavor, this whole machinery we're talking about building is it's, it's empty. 
and futile. I promised you poetry. So, so the poet and activist Muriel Rukeyser in her poem, The Speed of Darkness, says this, that the universe is made of stories, not of atoms. And, and that's why I like coming to OC6, is because of the stories, not the atoms. Uh, it's because of the storytellers. And many of the people in this room and at this conference are the purveyors of these stories. Um, put a, in a way that's slightly more accessible to my brain by my other favorite poet, Calvin, from Calvin and Hobbes, he says this when he's faced with an empirical definition of the creation of the universe. He says that's the whole problem with science, is a bunch of empiricists trying to describe things of unimaginable wonder. And I feel like this is something we do a lot. We try to quantify the essence of wonder so that we can deliver it. Uh, and that is, an that is a fundamentally ephemeral ingredient that only you all know how to wield. And that's why we're glad you're here. So basically, after all these years, I still find myself completely transported by the power of this medium, by the power of experiences like traveling while black, by the ability of human beings to create transcendent experiences, and the power of the stories told by creators and the poetry of the stuff they create. And that's basically the point for me, that like the road is absolutely, inarguably paved with the empirical, with the elements I've described, but none of it makes any sense without you. And, and that's our actual North Star. That is the true North Star we follow. And that is the secret 11th element that I refer to. It's the magic 11th ingredient is you and the unimaginable wonder that creators bring. And that is my story. Thank you. <laughs>